point lead still for BYU. 14 minutes to go now. Just about in the second half. And whoa, Keena Young, nice reverse. He's fired up. I'm really surprised that they have Brown on Young. Brown did such a great job on Playstead in the first half. They should switch up defensive assignments. 18 points for Big Darren Brown and two fouls. There's Ewing to Spencer. Thought about it. Kamard in his face. He'll work against Kamard. Down baseline. Tries to get it back to Brown. Turnover. Here goes Rhodes. Jones hustles to catch up. Good lay in. Great job, Mike Rose, the senior with two more. Did a great job using his body because Jones was humming down the floor. And now Wyoming's going to take a timeout. That's Devin Moore's speed, like those footballers That's out right. there for Wyoming. They're on their feet here in the Marriott Center. Six-point lead, the biggest of the night. Only for the entertainment of our audience and any retransmission, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use or dissemination of this telecast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to kiss up so they can use the dissemination. Of the yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Oh, what a great place to watch a ball game. They've won 25 straight here in Provo. They're on an 8-0 run. Looking for a win, 26 in a row. Tied with Air Force for the nation's second longest home win streak. Gonzaga, of course, up top with 47. First time tonight, BYU goes to a zone. Ball to 2-3. Spencer, quick three. Can't get it to go. Keena Young going up, drop time to pull it down. Look at Austin Age fighting. He gets the rebound. Ball to BYU with the six-point lead. Underneath the Young who works on Brown. Fade away, can't fall. Rebound. Offensive rebound and puts it back for two. Missed time jump on the part of Brown and it went over the top of his head. Keena gets the gift. Young now with 17. Brown leads all scores with 18. Ewing's three, way long. Kamard, long ball to Keena Young. Ainge to Rose, good look in the corner, bam! That's a great job by Ainge, a great job by Ainge, and I can tell you, Coach McLean of Wyoming is really upset. His transition defense the last two dimes down was absolutely horrible. Nice touch pass by Ainge. Everybody assumes that he, as soon as he gets the ball right there, he's got an open look, but he finds Rose in the corner, and as you pointed out, James had all sorts of time to measure that one, and it's nothing but net. Here's the transition defense I was talking about. Wyoming has a difficult time getting back, and you just can't leave a man that wide open to measure his shot. And the result now is that a six-point lead that you made reference to just a couple of seconds ago is now 11. Well, speaking of 11, senior Mike Rose, he had 11 points in the first eight games, Todd. The last nine games prior to this one, 68 points, including three okay, threes say, in a row against it. UNLV. You want to say it because you're looking at his face. That's Opie, isn't it? Isn't it? Come on, say it. <laughs> that is Opie. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of singing Every Rose Has Its Thorn, uh, the poison song from the 80s, of course. But uh, I'll take a little 80s uh, TV. Oh, there you go. That'll work. There you go. Of course, Ronnie Howard could never shoot like that, not in his wildest dreams. Although I understand he's a pretty good softball player. For whatever that's worth, which is not a. Dermody checks in the game. Pass to Jones. Off the fingertips, out of bounds, a turnover. Ball in the hands now of BYU. Steve, with an 11 point lead. Steve McLean is trying to do whatever he can to get a unit out there that's going to be cohesive. They have some people in there that aren't usually in there, but he's doing anything he can to get some chemistry. There's Keena Young who will work on Dermody. And he gets the roll. Keena Young now with 19 points to lead all score. And now if you're BYU, you go down to him every time, every time until they change that defensive assignment. That's a mismatch. Dermody's the redshirt freshman, Keena Young, the senior out of Beaumont, Texas. It was an even tougher loss for Young when they went home to Beaumont to play Lamar, the upset. Lamar, there's another rebound for Ainge. Ainge is hit. Now, I often wonder, you know, Steve McLean is begging for a travel, but inevitably when the guy goes down like that, they feel obligated to call the foul. Ainge is able to get an obligational foul. BYU up by 13. 
with the inbound, gets it to Burchie, Burchie gets it to Falk, Falcons win! So a tough loss there in Arena Auditorium in Laramie for Steve McLean and his pokes. But one thing is for sure, at 2-1 and one, and beating UNLV and San Diego State and taking Air Force to the wire, this is a tough team, but they are out of gas here, it seems, in the second half and having trouble with that zone defense. For whatever reason, you're right. You pointed out earlier, hey, 72-20, you know, they're at the high altitude. But one of the things you can't take into account is emotionally how much that takes out of you. They had everything going, you know, wanting to knock them off. They had their chances. They didn't get it done. They have to be a little bit depressed. But then again, you know what? Maybe we're making some excuses because they played awfully hard in that first 15 minutes of this game. They led for the entire first half until the end of, you know, until that three-point shot at the end. But right now, you're right. And of course, against the zone, it would seem that they would thrive with all the guards that they have, but they've yet to hit a three since they've gone to the zone. BYU, on the other hand, seems to be making all the right substitutions. Everybody that's coming off the bench is making a contribution, whether it's points, steals, defense, or assists. Both free throws fall for Young. Keena Young now with 21 points. The leading scorer coming in, the leading scorer in this ball game. Brandon Ewing, the leading scorer in the Mountain West Conference, hasn't scored in this second half, and there's that number 18. Oh, run for BYU. There's Brandon Ewing. Back out to Jones. 10 on the shot clock. Are you surprised they went back to man for man? Absolutely, with the trouble that Wyoming was having, has to throw up a long prayer and it doesn't hit the rim. Shot clock violation, they had two of those in the second half against Air Force and Steve McLean's off the bench. Here's something to think about with regards to going back to the man for man and I think that Coach Rose has done this for a confidence factor. He doesn't want them to think that they can't play man up defense and now the 15 point lead, give them a little confidence, get a stop like that and let them think to themselves, hey, you know what, we can still man up. That's pretty good. You must, write your own, you must write your own column in the newspaper around here. Finally, I get some props. An entire football season, in the middle of basketball season, I get some props from that guy. And by the way, who was that guy in the Air Force game that I heard just screaming out of his mind? Who was that? What a loser. What a he loser. Was. <laughs> the who -za. Okay. Oh, uh, that John Denver. If any of you happen to have watched the BYU-Utah football game, you heard that same voice. My partner, James Bates, doing an outstanding job. Well, thank you. That was that was a fun run in football. And then, you know, of course, uh, we got to hang out a little bit in the studio doing all these the recaps that you can see on the mountain, running uh, on the mountain. Your, your, your team, the season in review, BYU. We just did them last weekend, so make sure you check that out. But had a great run at it in football.